Yo guys, what is up? Max on Borderlands video, and today we're talking about the 10 things that are new in the Tiny Tina's Wonderlands one-shot adventure for the Assault on Dragon Keep. Now, this is a re-release of the Assault on Dragon Keep DLC with a few changes. There's been a lot of mixed reviews from the community. Uh, I'm just going to kind of talk about some of the things that they added that are new so that you can judge if this is worth for you in your mind uh, spending the money on or getting for free on Epic and putting in your time. I have 12 hours in it so far. I've been having a blast, but I do want to talk about some of the new things because I don't think that they've done a great job of like letting the community know what's actually new in this. So I decided to do that myself. I hope you guys enjoy the video, guys. Let's get right into it. So the first thing that's new in this one-shot adventure is a new intro cinematic. This standalone is made for people that haven't experienced Borderlands 2 before. So there's a new Marcus like intro cinematic that kind of explains all the events that have happened in Borderlands 2 and gives some new animations some new things if you've played Borderlands like a ton uh it's kind of cool to see some of this new stuff but it is basically like a new cinematic that wraps up uh the events leading up to this to give you some info and to, to like kind of set the mood for what this DLC is at number two, there are new shield archetypes, or sh new shield types called kite shields. These kite shields read knockback melee attackers with a burst of wind. Uh, these were not in Borderlands 2 base. I'm gonna see if I can show them off for you guys. My like, audio is bugging a little bit, so um, maybe if, it, if I get hit, yeah. So knocks him back, Don't does a little bit of damage to him. Uh, obviously not like the craziest addition, but I think this might be something we see in actual Wonderlands and that's why they're adding it to this. Uh, maybe to see if people like them or not. But these new kite shields are a new part and they're coming all rarities. I've gotten a green one and a purple one. Maybe there's a legendary one that I haven't gotten yet, but um, pretty cool. <laughs> At number three, there are new quests for the Bane and for Face McShooty. Now, these are fan favorite quests from Borderlands 2's uh, base game, and they've added them into this DLC to kind of like for players that never experienced these quests to experience them. Um, not the biggest of changes, but once again, if you've played this a bunch of times, it's kind of cool to see these new things. Um, Face McShooty is one of my favorites. I'll play a little moment of my time shooting Face McShooty on stream. Curious as to why. What the shit? What? <laughs> At number four, there are new cosmetics. Now, these cosmetics are pretty sick. Unfortunately, they're exclusive to this standalone. You cannot get them in your like main borderlands too and you can't transfer them over so they're just for this they're cool to look at um but they are just cosmetic options so like not the biggest things but uh i'm very much enjoying my new my new look <laughs> at number five there are new gear drops and dedicated drops so i've already shown off the kite shield i had don't have any of the other gear to show off to you guys but for example the king's fight um like the ghost kings are dropping nor fleets so you can get a level seven nor fleet from them um and each of the bosses are assigned kind of like eight plus uh dedicated drops from them so like people are getting height of terramorphous from killing the sorcerer at the end uh some pretty cool stuff there and having a level seven nor fleet to run you through this campaign is uh is pretty cool so uh yeah that's number five Number six is the new Ludipult. Now, I just made a video shooting this thing 10 times, but this is added into this. Uh, it drops a bunch of, like, random gear that you can get from anywhere. I got a skin that only drops from Vermivorous for zero from shooting this thing for a 10 Iridium. So, pretty cool there. Not the biggest uh, crazy addition, but Ludipult go burr. <laughs> At number seven, there's new skill leveling. So, in this game... At level two, you unlock your action skill as opposed to level five. And every time you level up, you're going to get two skill points. I believe that the max level cap is 35. I don't think anyone's reached that yet, but there is a trophy that someone found that is that gives it a trophy for reaching level 35. Um, but for example, I'm running a basic like full Maya build down into like full green tree and full red tree to get rune and uh, sub sequence. I'll be working my way up through blue now, but I'm going to have a full build at level like 30 basically, which is really cool because it, the scaling is very different. You're a much more powerful character 
playing through this than you normally would. Like, you're at level 20. You're way stronger than you normally would be. But to offset that, the enemies are going to level up very quickly. Uh, in this DLC, enemies, like, between each map gain, like, three levels. So I found myself at, like, level 17 if I was falling behind on farming, fighting, like, level 25 enemies, which they get that damage resistance, and it was actually pretty difficult. So I've, I've had to spend quite a bit of time kind of, like, farming and leveling and doing side quests to keep up with the, like, level requirements of the main quest. So definitely been enjoying that. At number eight, there is a new skeleton chest. Now, I've only gotten to open this thing once, and I got two purples out of it. I haven't heard of anyone getting new gear out of this thing or new, like, effervescent gear or anything like that because it does show some, like, rainbow stuff on it. But I've also only had one key to open. But people that have had ten keys, I don't think they've gotten anything that's more than just, like, uh, normal golden chest stuff. But it is there, and uh, maybe there are some cool things hidden in there that, that people haven't received yet. It has only been a day. At number 9, there are new Seraph Crystal Drops. So basically, in this DLC, when you're playing through it, uh, kind of any enemy around the map can drop uh, Seraph Crystals, meaning that at level uh, 20, I was able to buy myself a Florentine, which is crazy, and there's a Seraph Vendor. And so getting able to use Seraph weapons, not at endgame, not having to, like, be super high level and getting to use these things has been pretty fun. It does look like the Seraph... Uh, items in this are limited it seems like there's only four um but getting seraph crystals from like random skeletons at level three is pretty cool and coming in at our number 10 spot is you unlock true vault hunter mode while playing this dlc by beating it um so you can play through it once and then play through it again with increased difficulty and higher enemy scaling uh which has been pretty cool just a little side note though uh, I've noticed that the enemies in the beginning of the DLC aren't scaling to my level now that I've beaten it a second time, which is a little worrying because uh, that would mean that if I wanted to farm for a B-Shield, for example, uh, the enemies would only be level 17, so I couldn't get a level like 30 B-Shield, but I haven't reached max level yet, so maybe when I do reach max level, they'll scale up, but I uh, just want to let you guys know, I hope Gearbox fixes that immediately, and yeah guys, that is it for this video. Now, the reception to this has been very mixed, and I think this is more for players that haven't played this dlc before um and if you are a new player that is looking to sink some serious hours into borderlands 2 i strongly recommend you get the handsome collection you're just gonna get more bang for your buck now if you're someone that just wants to give this a go and see what it's about and experience this dlc and you're not looking to sink like 100 hours into borderlands 2 um this is great for you i'm gonna be honest though as someone who's played through borderlands 2 and this dlc many times if you're a like hardcore borderlands fan and you can like appreciate some of these little changes and and uh, it excites you then i think you're gonna have fun in this i've been having a lot of fun it's been cool to see all these little changes even though they're small um it's fun to run through this and it's been so long since i played it the best thing about this is that the base content here is good this dlc was incredible it's a fan favorite for a reason so it's great to play through if you are more of a casual player borderlands 2 casual fan of this i wouldn't recommend picking this up for ten dollars you're getting the exact same thing with just like a few other changes and you probably won't care about the changes because i mean you just paid ten dollars for stuff you already own so um yeah that's kind of my recommendation at the end of the day it's your ten dollars uh if on pc it's free so i got this for free so no complaints there um but yeah I, it's not gonna be for everyone it isn't meant for everyone you do not have to go out and buy this but if you want to give it a go, here are some of the 10 things that are different about it. And yeah, guys, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Take care. Peace. I was